In this video, we're picking up where we left off with this illustration that I've brought in from Adobe Fresco. Here I am in Adobe Illustrator on the desktop. And what I wanna do now is some image tracing so I can convert some of this pixel-based art into vector art. So I'm gonna start with just this flower here and I'm just going to make a copy of it. I'm holding Option or Alt and dragging that out and I'll zoom in here. So we can see this artwork has a lot of the texture that I really want to have in my vector artwork. So this is a perfect candidate for image trace. Now what I have selected here is an image. And as we can see here in the upper left hand corner, Illustrator is identifying this as an image. It's embedded and it is 72 PPI. Now when you're doing an image trace, the resolution is not terribly important. And that is because ultimately this is going to be vectors. It will be resolution independent. So the resolution that you want here uh, in the image that you're starting with is really just enough so that you can see all of the texture that you want. Now I'm going to do a black and white tracing because I want just one color and that way I can just assign it any color that I want. So I'm going to start up here with the image trace button and by default, if you click on this, you get a black and white tracing. Now it's not a really nice tracing. So we're going to do some adjusting here by going up and grabbing this button here to open up the image trace panel. So as we can see, I've done a black and white tracing. What that means is that illustrator is going to read everything in this image and decide whether it's going to be black or white. The way you control that is by using this slider here, threshold. So the higher I push this up, the more we're gonna trend towards black in the art. The lower I make this, the more we're gonna trend towards white. For this art, it seems like somewhere in the middle is gonna be where I want to be. Then here under advanced, just turn this triangle down if you don't see these sliders. Here's where I can capture more of the texture in this artwork. So right now, we're right in the middle here. If I push this higher, I'm gonna get more detail out of this tracing. And I'll go just a little bit higher up there, capture a little bit more detail. Also here, you're gonna see more roughness the higher you push this number up. And then noise, I always just sort of play with this. I usually have it low, but you can play with it and see what it does for your artwork. Then here, the first method is correct. We're gonna create fill, so this needs to be checked. All of these default options are fine as they are, but very importantly, I wanna check ignore white. And what that does is it takes everything that Illustrator is seeing as white here and it just eliminates it. So we're only gonna get the tracing of this black line art. So it's gonna save us a lot of cleaning up. Now, if I like these settings that I've created, I can make this into a preset that I can use later. So if I'm using this brush a lot in Fresco and I like this tracing, then I can go ahead and save this as a preset and use it for all future uh, tracings with that brush. Now, one thing to be aware of is down here, Illustrator's giving us some information about the complexity that we'll have in the resulting vector artwork. So I like to keep an eye on these numbers. And of course, the lower some of these sliders are, the less texture you're picking up, the fewer number of anchor points you're gonna be getting in your artwork. And that can be a good thing because too many anchor points can create so much complexity that it will slow down your system. And this is a particular concern for pattern designers because very often this art here will be repeated over and over in the pattern. So keep an eye on these numbers and balance out your tracing settings between getting the accuracy that you want, the texture that you want, and also the least amount of complexity. All right, so when you have all of this set the way that you want it and you like the way the image looks, just notice up here in the upper left corner, now what we have is no longer an image, but it's an image tracing. So this is something that you can actually come back in in this state and always make adjustments to these sliders. It's kind of in limbo right now. And in order to make this into vectors, we have to click on this button here to expand it. So I'll click on that. 
And now this has been converted into a group, as we can see here in the upper left-hand corner, of all of these vector paths. If I go into outline mode, that's Command or Control Y, now we can see that these are vector paths. Also, if I go over to my swatches panel with this art selected, I can just change the color of it. So this is the beauty of converting something to vectors. You have this wonderful art and you can make it any color that you want. And especially you can make it any size that you want without losing any of this texture. But as we can see, there are a lot of anchor points in here and it looks fairly faithful to the original. All right, let's go ahead and look at tracing another object. I have a lot of elements that I can trace here in this artwork. And I should say, by the way, that when you are working in Fresco, plan it out so that you have individual objects. It just makes it easier to trace than if you were to paint everything on one layer and have it all sort of smushed together. It's harder to get line art and black and white art that you can color later out of it. So it's good to organize your art with image tracing in mind. Now what I want to do is trace this little leaf group here and it's on its own layer. And remember, this is the layer that has transparency applied. Let me go ahead and drag this out. I'm just holding Option or Alt to drag out a copy. And transparency isn't going to matter once we image trace this. It's going to wind up being solid. But because anything I do on this layer will be assigned that transparency setting, it's just confusing to me. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer by clicking the New Layer button. And then I'm going to just take this selected object here and drag it up to the new layer. So we can see it turned darker and now it's on a fresh layer. I don't have to worry about that transparency setting. All right, now I'm going to zoom in. And with the art selected, I'll click the image trace button. So this is going to do that default black and white tracing. And we see the art disappears. Well, that's a function of the color that we're starting out with. So that green color, it's actually a lot lighter in value than the last flower we traced, which was kind of a dark plum. So we need to go over here to the threshold slider and just drag this up a little bit. Now we can see the shape of the art. So just know that Illustrator is always looking for what color it is and whether it's going to change it into black or into white and you control that with the threshold slider. Right now I'm seeing 266 anchor points but maybe not as much texture as I'd like to get so I'm going to push this slider up a little bit more trying to capture more of the roughness here. And then again definitely want to check ignore white. And I did mention this before, but there's a little eye icon here and you can sort of use this to flip back and forth between the original and the tracing. Now to complete this process, I'm going to click expand. And now I have my vector art, as I can see here when I go into outline mode, that's command or control Y. So another thing that I like to do when I'm tracing art to use it in designs, very often at this stage, I might wanna go ahead and just make a printout of this, just so I can hold it in my hand, see what scale I'm using it at and whether or not the texture that I'm getting out of it is actually visible at the size I intend to print it at. So we've moved artwork from Adobe Fresco on the iPad into Adobe Illustrator on the desktop. We've traced it using Image Trace. And in my next video, I'm going to talk about managing complexity. And it's a topic that's so important for pattern designers because everything you do is designed to be repeated. If you've ever experienced a slowdown in your system when you're using pattern editing mode, this could be the reason why. So subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to know the minute that video is published. And if you like this video, share it with a friend. My name is Laura Coyle. I teach Adobe Illustrator to designers and artists. You can find out more on my website at lauracoylecreative.com. And thank you for watching.